Hey everyone, welcome to the Current Case Podcast. We're a group of four friends discussing the latest current events as they apply to our everyday lives. From foreign policy to local events, we cover it all as best we can in a manner not restrained by the bias of the big media corporations. We may not always agree with each other on certain topics, but that is what makes it all the more interesting. Being able to sit down and have a civil conversation on even the most controversial topics is a necessity for a better society. Hello, everyone, and welcome back to the Current Case Podcast. This is Season 3, Episode 2. Today is Thursday, April 20th, 420. Hiya, hiya, baby. Oh, yeah, baby. I am getting high off that $4.20 donation. We wish we had $4.20. No one's fucking donated. Speaking of donations... Um, we're back at it, um, social media wise, so make sure you check out our Instagram. Uh, we'll, we promise we're going to be posting a lot more shorts this season as well. We found a new, or Matt found a new AI program that'll help us, uh, cut up our videos and make them into shorts, so it should be very beneficial for us. Good. And of course, uh, today we don't have Cameron as well. That fucker once again ditched us to go to Florida. I don't really get what's so appealing about Florida. I mean, half the state's like underwater at this point. Like if you saw Fort, if you saw Fort Lauderdale, like wasn't it like 20 inches underwater at one point in that big rainstorm? It was absolutely insane. Ashton, did you see anything from that Fort Lauderdale? Honestly, I haven't been really mm, keeping too mm, keeping up too much with what's been going on down there. I've heard mm, heard a lot of things, mm, seen a lot of things in DeSant- regarding DeSantis, but haven't really. Mm, Invested a whole lot of time in looking into it. Okay, that's fair, but from what I've seen... Like, My bad. But from what I've seen, um, it, like, literally people driving through the road that looked like a boat. <laughs> it was horrible. It was bad, that rainstorm. So I'm pretty sure they're still recovering now. But you'll be back next week once again. Come and Cameron L. So fuck them. Anyways, uh, today we wanted to cover more internal U.S. news. So these are topics that I think will be very interesting tonight. We wanted to kind of stay away this week from geopolitics. I felt like really there hasn't been much happening this week that we haven't already touched upon already. I mean, we can say... Except uh, Russia bombing Russia. Yeah, <laughs> that was funny. Ah, uh, yeah. Common Russia. Oh, yeah. Russia bombing Russia. That was hilarious. But <laughs> like, yeah. Supposedly, one of their SU, SU-34 has accidentally dropped a bomb over Belgorod, which is a city close to the <laughs> Russia-Ukraine border on the Russian side. Right. I mean, there's so many times you can say, <laughs> Russia, LOL, or fuck China, without being repetitive. So, other than that, really, nothing too big of an advancement. Friendly gun fire! Goddamn. <laughs> there you go. Took you like 20 minutes to find that sound effect. Um, but... That's why we have editing. <laughs> I'm not editing shit. I told you once well, again. We literally, just, <laughs> we literally just explained what happened behind yeah. that story. Why are you gay? Oh, thank you. You say he's gay. You are gay. Oh, Jesus. It's still How long did that go? God damn it. Um, so, yeah, we wanted to stay away from geopolitics this week. Uh, a couple of different stories we got going on here. Have a interesting, should be an interesting topic for all of us. So, recently, a couple of days ago multiple different events occurred. So um, this happened last week. There's a 21-year-old or 20-year-old woman uh, shot and killed. Uh, She was with her friends, I think three other people. She lived in New York at the time. She was going to a friend's house in rural upstate New York. And uh, she pulled, or the driver pulled into the wrong driveway. She was a passenger at the time. And they realized, oh, wait, this is the wrong driveway. And they were like, oh, shit, we got to get out of here. So they started backing out. In that area, I've heard also, like, there's pretty poor lighting. So it's at nighttime. Uh, They couldn't really see too well. So they realized it was the wrong driveway. Uh, They started pulling out. And then the owner of the house, a 65-year-old man, uh, took shots at them and struck and killed uh, this 21 or 20-year-old woman. So now he is being charged with second-degree murder. In a similar case, also around last week as well, we had a young guy ring the wrong doorbell. He's a 16-year-old boy. Uh, He rang the wrong doorbell. He was trying to go to his friend's house, and then when the owner basically opened up, he shot and killed him as well. In this instance, the 16-year-old was black, and the 
guy, of course, that shot him was white. So you can say that there's some racial aspect to that as well. That was an 84-year-old who shot at him. And of course, we've been seeing these really pop up recently of all the rise. Of course, mass shootings still at all-time high this year. And these incidents have been happening these past couple of weeks. So I figured it'd be a good time to talk about our thoughts on that and what it means to be a responsible gun owner. All right, well, out of all three of us, so we are all, we've all used firearms before. We all know how to handle them responsibly. So I think it's important to discuss, like, arm, firearm safety and just give our thoughts on these two cases and whether or not uh, there's general opinions on them and what actions should have been taken here. So two core principles were violated in all of these. Number one, don't point a gun at something you're not willing to destroy, right? Fucking obvious. Yep. Uh, second of all, you don't point a gun or shoot the gun if you cannot positively identify your target. So there's two things. You shouldn't even draw a weapon if you don't know what it is that you're looking at. Mm -hmm. On top of that, going a step further, even if you do PID a target, you need to know what's behind it, both short-term and long-term. Because guess what? Bullets travel. They penetrate. They go through things. Just because a person's standing there doesn't mean that 200 yards past them, there could be another innocent person or um, any number of things. So multiple different uh, gun safety, what you want to call them, rules. Violations. For violations. Yeah. yeah. 65 year olds claiming that uh, that he didn't mean to shoot at the car. That's then don't like, point the yeah. gun at the vehicle. <laughs> it's Imagine, like, what a concept. <laughs> it's like you, yeah, like you literally when you hold a gun and you point it at something, your either your primary point is to either kill it or incapacitate it. And it's like, how can you not mean to shoot at a car if you took aim at it and shot at it? <laughs> that doesn't make any Even sense. Even brandishing a weapon in some jurisdictions is illegal. Yeah. Like if you pull your weapon, that's mm -hmm. that can be construed as assault. Right. Because if you are the one getting a gun pulled on you, you assume they're about to use it. Therefore, you know, you can be psychologically damaged or anything else. And that's why most of the time it's still constituted as assault. Mm -hmm. So don't go brandishing your firearms just willy-nilly. And New York's not a stand-your-ground state either, so this mm -hmm. guy is absolutely fucked. He's going to get charged for sure with second-degree murder. As he should. Yeah, probably make the argument it could be first degree. But he, it was definitely a clear violation. Um, I'll say I don't know the background behind this dude. I know he's just tied the shit out of that car he didn't know. It's like, I think what I've been noticing here with the rise of mass shootings, it seems to be a lot of shoot first and think later. And as responsible use of, uh, or using guns responsibly, of course, that's a big problem. But no one is really taught gun safety unless you're brought up in a home that has firearms. Yeah. You know, so that could also be part of the problem is, you know, guns are now being viewed as more and more taboo. Like, oh, people shouldn't own them, shouldn't use them. They're a tool just like anything else. If you go and hand a random person an axe, they're probably going to put it through their leg. Right. They've had zero experience seeing people chop a log mm -hmm. or use it at all. Like, huh, what's this do? Slam? Oh, right in my foot. Mm -hmm. You're like, ah, ban axes. Ban axes are terrible. They're dangerous. Anything is dangerous if you use it incorrectly. Yeah, exactly. I remember That's... back in the 40s and 50s, they used to have firearm classes in public schools. Mm -hmm. You know, they used to have guns in there, they disassemble it, they teach you how to use it safely. I'm not saying we should go back to that, that opens up a whole other can of worms. But what I am saying is that a general adult should know basic firearm safety under any circumstance. So, you don't have to own one, you don't have to agree with it, but you should understand. Yeah, and I think if you do own at least one firearm, you definitely have to know proper firearm safety. Absolutely. So let me ask you this. So I know some states are loosening their restrictions. You can conceal carry without a proper permit. Are you against that then? Because they're not getting their proper firearm uh, firearm safety training, but they're still able to conceal carry regardless. And I think that's causing a rise in these incidents of shoot first and then think later. All goes down to how you determine the Second Amendment, right? Mm -hmm. Shall not be infringed means shall not be infringed. It's your right to own them. However, just because you have a right does not mean you don't have responsibility. Mm -hmm. And if you want to exercise that right, you must also not only just accept the responsibility, you have to take it upon yourself and go further than that and make sure that you know, number one, what your gun is, how to properly maintain it, and then, of course, proper gun safety. Mm -hmm. So it depends. It's an individual case-by-case -case basis. What I'd be more in favor of is when you purchase a gun, you have to go through like a mandatory, at least, video explaining 
you know, the five core principles of gun ownership and then like make you take a test on it before you can take it out of the store. It can be multiple choice, but that way at least they're exposed to it and will probably remember some of it. Mm-hmm. See, now that I agree with because I'm, I'm against uh, these, some of these states loosening their permits. I think it's causing a big spike in those incidents of people just shooting first and thinking later. You know, Biden really talks about his oh, common sense gun control. This shit isn't common sense whatsoever. If you want to implement something like that, then add in some sort of video or something yeah. else when you pick up your weapon. Because it's not violating your Second Amendment mm -hmm. by like having you take a test or anything else. You have to do the same thing when you drive. Mm -hmm. But just the bare bones basics. That was a nice alliteration right there. Yeah. Of firearm ownership. Right. And yeah. I think a lot of um, gun stores already do this when you purchase a gun. Like they'll walk you through and kind of make sure you understand it. But if you really want to sign something into law, that would be something fairly reasonable. Because it doesn't restrict your ability to own any type of gun. It's just, hey, this is what you decided to pick out. Let's make sure you know what you're getting yourself into. In other words, define common sense. Yeah. Oh, yeah. So you're talking Biden that? Yeah. <laughs> define common sense, Biden. You don't have much. Japan AR-15 assault rifles. First of all, it's not an assault rifle. It's an armor light. But that's a whole other conversation I'm not trying to get into right now. Yeah. Dude's a fucking idiot. <laughs> yeah. We've established that. And... The country's established that. <laughs> and it's, yeah, it's ridiculous. Like, Matthew, I actually, I thought you'd have a somewhat different opinion. So you've kind of actually kind of surprised you come to an agreement here because I completely agree. When you purchase a gun, I think there has to be some, a class, as you said, maybe a video you have to watch and a test over it right after. Of course, you could maybe say it will probably be like a driver's license test where I mean, See, people fucking what drive. people would probably complain about us. Oh, they're making you take a test to exercise your right. It's like, okay, fine. I understand the principle, the point that you're making. Even if it's just a mandatory video, you have to sit there for five minutes and just watch it. Because if you go to any range, you have to sit there and watch their 20 minute range safety video, right? right. And exactly. that's like, no matter what range you go to, if you haven't been there before, you get to sit your ass down and spend mm -hmm. 20 minutes and go over firearm safety. Yeah, that's what we did the last time we went to the range. Yeah, it's like the same thing should probably be there at the gun store. Yeah, I agree. And it's like, I mean, you mentioned the axe comparison. It's like an axe, I mean, it's a tool you can use multi-purpose. Of course, it could be dangerous. You could, of course, use it in an aggressive, violent way. Anything you could use wrong enough to get hurt. Yeah. Like, it doesn't yeah. matter but what it is. This course. Apple Pencil I have right now, if I use it wrong enough, I can get hurt. I'm I mean, what I'm saying is like with an axe, for example, like kind of adding to that, what you're saying, like an axe, I mean, it's a tool used usually to chop things. I mean, gun, I mean, the whole purpose of a gun is usually to protect yourself, to kill. And hunt, hunt what game hunt, if you yeah. live in that part of the country. Exactly. So it's a tool made to kill. So, I mean, I think there has to be extra there. Like you shouldn't have to watch a video on an axe. I mean, you should get the training. You should at least be aware how to use an axe, but like a firearm, a tool meant to kill. There should be something there, whether it's a video, whether it's a written paperwork, something. There has to be more than what's happening right now. I also think it's a culture shift. You know, back in the day, I think firearms were more respected because mm -hmm. more people owned them. And it was a lot easier, like open carry and everything else. Like people knew what it was, what it was capable of. and had a certain level of like, all right, yeah, I grew up with this. Like I know what it is. Yeah, and they knew how to use it safely. Yeah. And you go back, even in like the 1800s, cowboys, you know, you should do some research on this, Jared, but it's not like the movies where they're just carrying on just brandishing it. It's like, man, if you did like something weird with your weapon, I'm sure all of a sudden, you know, all the 30 other people around you were like hyper aware that like, hey, that dude's messing with his gun. Like I've got my eye on him, you know? Yeah. I think there's also an interesting little tidbit. A lot of the single action arm... <laughs> Single action revolvers, such as like the single action army, typically they would only load up to five shots if they're carrying it in their holster as opposed to six. Because if you bump, if you had six on it in a chamber, and if you bump the hammer particularly hard, that could potentially touch off around and have it go right through your foot. Mm -hmm. I suppose that's where the, the whole saying sh shot yourself in the foot came from. <laughs> but think about how common firearms were back then. You know, everyone mm -hmm. had a pistol, everyone had a rifle, and that's just kind of how it was. I think there was overall respect. For the tool mm -hmm. and nowadays I mean you can get it easily and I don't think that's a problem I think it's back then you were probably expected to know how to use it because you would need it back then so your parents would introduce you to proper firearm safety take you out let you plank you know I'm sure they shot it 
Coca-Cola cans and stuff back then and just become familiar enough with it that it doesn't scare you. Because if it scares you and you're unfamiliar with it, it's ever in your possession, it's not going to work. You're yeah. not going to know how to use it. You're going to be unsafe. I think another kind of reason as to why we kind of seen the spike is because these days you can pretty much access anything on the internet and I think many of the, I guess, what's the word to describe it? Public forums. Well, let's say some guy who doesn't know a thing about firearms decides to look, he comes across, say, this montage of someone shooting things up. Yep, shooting things up with a firearm. He decides, hmm, I want to try and do that. Gets right into it. Either he realizes it's way more complicated than he ex expects it and actually takes the time to understand it, or he just goes, mm, oh, screw it, and, well, you know the rest. I mean, the mass shootings, I'm kind of separating that out because we've talked about the mass shootings in the past as well. Like I said, I think a lot of mental health has to do with that and our general mental health decline. I mainly just kind of focus on that irresponsible instance here with uh, these weapons, these two separate incidents. I'm sure there's been many more. I mean, I'm, <laughs> it should be common sense not to take a shot at someone just because they're pulled up in your driveway unless they have a present a clear threat to you. That's another point. It's like the only reason you should discharge a firearm because you are in imminent fear for your safety. Now, that doesn't mean, oh, I might get like hurt or something else. It means you are in immediate fear of your life. Mm -hmm. So if someone pulls up into my driveway and I have a weapon, just because they pull up in my driveway doesn't really mean I can do anything. Right. If I'm sitting there out in the garage and they come in the garage, technically they're in my house, but I still can't really like do anything. Yeah, if they're walking up to me with a knife in their hand yep. and walking towards me in an aggressive manner, and I fear for my life, then that's it's... another story. Right. But just because someone whips a U-turn in your driveway doesn't mean you get to blast them. <laughs> yeah, no. I think at the very least a verbal warning would be at least enough to prevent 99% of these situations. Uh, yeah, Ashton, I know you want to talk about conflict resolution here towards the end of the episode, so it'll, be, it'll fit in perfectly. Anyway, I started blasting. Bang, bang. But I wonder what camera to think of, because damn it, see, like the one week I want Cam, no, I was kidding, I like it. Well, like, the one week I really want Cam's thoughts here, he's not here, fucking idiot, I'll just... I think firearms are cool. <laughs> I think irresponsible firearm uses sucks. Something like that was that. cringe. Well, I'll, t I'll text him, him right now and see if I can get a response from him. Cameron, give me the boss. <laughs> but in all seriousness, all uh, condolences to those two victims... Such a waste of tragic incident, waste of life, especially since they're both so young. It's uh, horrible all around. No harm done, so. Yeah. yeah. All right, let's transition to the next topic. All right, right. yes. There the we question. are. All yeah, right. we're good. All right, so I wanted to transition to something a little bit more lighthearted, but also at yeah. the same time, I thought this was very interesting. I have another like serious topic. First. Oh, this is a serious topic. Well, I'm. Uh, you do? Or? Yeah, I have a couple topics that we'll talk about. Real quick. So one, we have another Kennedy running for president. Another Kennedy. Oh yeah, I heard Rob was Robert Kennedy. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I so heard. he's running as a Democrat against Joe Biden. It's home state of Boston, and he's campaigning essentially on his family's legacy. So what do you guys think? Another Kennedy in the White House, perhaps? I've heard a couple things about him. I mean, from what I've heard, and not the most favorable. I mean, we'll see how he does against Biden. But I have to do more research into his policies and stuff. It's, I don't know much about him just yet. Obviously, when the campaign trail gets here, I'll dig out my thoughts and stuff. Yeah. All I'll say for now is hopefully the Kennedy family curse doesn't rear its ugly head again. <laughs> Speaking of that, um, did you see the other day Biden is being sued for not releasing all those other JFK files? Is he? Yep. So a group of scholars is suing him, essentially saying, you know, Trump was supposed to release him back in 2017. Biden said they'd be out. They're still not out. So mm -hmm. like, you're obstructing historical research, <laughs> which is fair. It's been like yeah. 70 years at this point. It's like, we need to know. Oh, oh but some of our things are still in use. I highly doubt that. What, what president hasn't been sued at this point? I think all of them have been sued mm -hmm. for some dumb shit. In this case, Biden's at fault. But let's see if those charges actually go anywhere. And then finally, um, BuzzFeed News has been canned. Oh, yeah. So... We're going to take over their market and go do that. <laughs> so come here for your shorts instead of BuzzFeed. It probably oh, yeah. is going to be higher quality. I, see, I actually like BuzzFeed news, though. I thought like some of their stuff compared to the rest of BuzzFeed was a lot better, in my opinion. Like I, They had some good they had good articles from time to time. Like I felt if they had like separated from BuzzFeed, 
like lost the name BuzzFeed. I think it would have survived. Mm -hmm. But BuzzFeed itself, of course, is uh, going down. Yeah, it's pretty bad. All right, and then Matt, I know you had one more thing. You wanted to talk about one little tidbit. I know you got your passport here because you're going to France in the next couple weeks. So Yeah, exactly. One week from today, I will be in France. Join so you better go to the Patreon because this shit's expensive. So, um, yeah, so in other news, passport wait times are at unprecedented highs, according to the State Department. Seven to nine weeks for an expedited passport and 10 to 13 for a regular service passport. I did mine expedited, uh, priority shipping, everything else. From the time I turned in my application to the day I had the passport in my mailbox it was three weeks and two days. Not so bad. Yeah, and they're quoting like 10 to 13 weeks. I don't know. I had really good luck with mine, so praise God, but yeah. it went incredibly fast. Yeah, I wonder if it might have something to do with the actual mail system rather than getting the passport itself because I actually had an instance this month where I have to renew my vehicle's registration since it's my birthday. It was my birthday mm -hmm. not long ago. I got the registration back um, done in March in advance. Still hadn't received the actual registration thing and stickers. And since my birthday passed, I decided to go to the local BMV and do it in person because it was taking too long. Meanwhile, though, my sister, who did it around the same time, got it within a couple weeks. Got hers within a couple weeks. The government could either be slow as fuck or efficient. There's, like, no in-between. Most of the time, it's slow as fuck and Efficient government? Yeah. <laughs> that doesn't happen. Cameron just texted us. He said, you people don't fucking listen to me. Holy shit, I told you twice last week that I wasn't going to be there. God damn, he sent us an angry text. We were kind of Shit. ripping them pretty hard, though. Told him to call in. Call in, bitch. It's not being on a plane's not an excuse. We're we're uh, texting Cameron live right now. Mm -hmm. oh, boy. <laughs> call in, bitch. <laughs> All right, but in all seriousness, though, let's yeah. get into this next topic. Yeah. All right, so I came across an article this past week. I thought it was pretty interesting, so I'm just going to read kind of the general gist of it. And I figured it'd be fun to have a little discussion on this. So this whole argument with this article is essentially saying a lot of jobs are useless. So he says, uh, when he speaks of work, he says, work is what you engage in because you must basically not to starve or become homeless and not the activities you would do anyway, such as like uh, hobbies, paintings, gardening, taking care of animals, writing books, which are all highly labor intensive occupations. Work in the general sense of physical and mental exertion to achieve some goal can be beautiful and meaningful. And if not, people when engaged in such even when the concept of money were to collapse. So he's saying we're a busy species and always will be. People will still likely farm and uh, produce, maintain, even clean, repair everything that... <laughs> Cameron Heim, I'm not making a phone mind? call on a noisy-ass airplane. Are you out of your mind? eight people in my immediate vicinity. Are you out of your mind? Are you out of your mind? <laughs> All right, that's it. We're going at him. Fuck this. <laughs> no, just kidding. Um, anyway. Fuck. All right, what was I saying? So basically, people are going to work regardless, but essentially what he's saying, but would people volunteer uh, to open an Excel spreadsheet or schedule entirely pointless, me entire entirely pointless meetings if they could just produce for themselves? I don't know, Jared. You had time to write your book and still didn't finish it. Fuck off. <laughs> but he's saying, I spent countless hours on writing my new book and working on other personal projects. It's hard mental work, but he loves it, and he would write that thing even if there weren't a monetary payoff. Yeah, that's funny coming from the guy who designs Minecraft maps okay. for fun. See, I, yeah, I enjoy it. Like, I would do it without monetary payoff. I mean, right now we're not getting paid for this. I enjoy doing this regardless. Oh, but every time I ask you to play Minecraft or do something, okay, I feel like, oh, I'm, I'm inviting Minecraft. you to my Minecraft server, bitch. <laughs> Finally. Ashton, yeah. do you play Minecraft? Or game you see, but I don't have it on my computer anymore. Oh, damn it. Okay, let's continue. Join my Fuck. common case, current case uh, Minecraft Discord server. No. I promise we aren't leaking any uh, government documents in this one. No, don't worry. <laughs> None of us have government jobs anyway, so no okay. worry about that. So what, what this guy's fucking saying, okay, so he likes hard work, he likes doing the things he enjoys, but he says when he gets tossed into an office where he has to pretend to be productive for like three or four hours a day and can spend the rest of his time on Reddit or pretending not to be on Reddit, he drowns. Meaning he fucking drowns. It's it's a jackpot. It's not, or that's not a jackpot. It's not great. And this has led to his burnout and depression. Bro's a couple discovered years ago. mental health. <laughs> Basically, like, I don't know. Go like get a better manager. Or, like talk to management. I don't know what to tell you, dude. 
You sound kind of like a pussy, honestly. Jeez. Get a life. Well, no, I, I'm at work, but I don't feel like working. Oh, fuck off. Well, 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 well what's well, the nature of the work? Low life fucking scum. Like office work. He's saying a lot of office work is usually useless. So he's saying... Oh, yeah? You think it's useless? Go work at Redacted, where you can go load, <laughs> you know, three tons of stuff during the day and walk 23,000 steps. Because I did that for two summers, and it sucked. Right, Trust me, I would much rather be typing in Excel than breaking my back moving a bunch of patio pavers. God damn, son. <laughs> These people are entitled. This generation, I swear to God. He says we work far more than it is necessary, and that is a fact. Consider all the technological advances we made in the last couple of hundred years, all productivity gains, all progress, and all new products. The purpose of all, all of this is to make our lives more comfortable, like the advancement of AI, for example, and provide us with more freedom to spend our time with how we see fit, like enjoying the things that we do. It was supposed to liberate us, right? Instead, he's saying we're working more than ever, you working useless jobs that take up. We do not care. <laughs> Okay, so, Matty, let me ask you this then. You saying you would rather be in a, like a useless office job sitting in like a 9 to 5 all day instead of being out like enjoying the things that, or doing the things that you want to do, like working, maybe you, like your dreams, following your dreams, doing something you want to do. You just want, like that's what the whole basis of this article is, like people are working these useless. It depends on how much money I'm making in said 9 to 5. If I'm making $23,000 a year, probably not. If I'm making 200 some odd thousand dollars, yeah, absolutely. Okay. There's a thing in economics called supply and demand, right? Okay. Well, if, you, if you hit a certain threshold, then yes, you'll be more than happy to sit there and do medial office tasks and be completely content with it. I mean, but does money buy give you happiness? Absolutely. Mm -hmm. I mean, would you rather, so you'd rather sit in the office all day, like even if it does pay well, you'd rather sit in the office all day, work a nine to five. Let's say the job sucks though, but you're still being paid well. But it's also causing you, even though you're getting money, your mental health is also declining at the same time. Why would I let my mental health decline in a job? That doesn't make I sense. I mean, so you quit? Yes. Okay. But, so what job would you go to? Or would you want to do something that you enjoy? You're missing the point. Go work somewhere the... that you enjoy it and get paid for it. But you, That's the definition of a job. But you're saying people aren't doing that. Like, people are work a yeah, lot well, of times. Also, 90% of people aren't in a career that they enjoy. Yeah. And they didn't change their major that, in college and just got stuck with it. That's, so, yeah, the average person's kind of retarded. Yeah. So, <laughs> he's saying that's the problem. Like, that's the whole point of his essay. He's saying, like, that's the big problem. Okay, then the everyone system. just, like, go switch into the industry you want to be in. Just have this it's mass exactly. exodus and then go work. It's not that simple. I wish it was, but yeah. I know it's not. It's called an exaggeration. He's saying it's an industry of bullshit. So basically, uh, misrepresentation comes through two faulty equations. GDP growth equals happiness, progress, and consumption. And happiness, or which that equals happiness slash consumption. So an experiment with his essay. Try throwing away most of the things you think you need and see what happens. The results might surprise you. He says he's never been happier and content when he's deleted most of his social media profiles, canceled some of his subscriptions, and sold his TV and most other electric devices. Oh, yeah. It's almost like overstimulation ruins your life. What a concept. Now he's pointing all this out, though. He's, uh, he's basically criticizing what he calls uh, late-stage capitalism. Not that term again. The dude made some bullshit points in the beginning and makes some okay points at the end. Overall, I don't know. I don't agree with this guy. Like, you don't think? Did you read it? You should read turn it around. It. I'll read it. I'll read it right now. <laughs> read it. All right, uh, I'll read it live. I'll read it live. <laughs> I'll read it live. Oh, this is All right. right towards the end of Let it. us I briefly mean, consider the almost endless bureaucracy and accompanying stupidity that has taken hold of our society. Instead of becoming more efficient and using fewer resources over time, most administrative apparatuses keep on growing. Not just in the public sector, as one might think, but even more so in the private one. A myriad of positions with astounding job descriptions that no one quite understands, not even those who occupy them. Most of those jobs are entirely unnecessary and exist solely to provide someone, anyone, with a position of comfort. New ones are created constantly, increasing our society's complexity and associated maintenance costs and encouraging nepotism and corruption. This gets full of bullshit. <laughs> Another case where jobs involve the production of short-lived products such as fast fashion or those garbage plastic toys for children. Yeah. All right, fair point, but guess what? People buy them, therefore people need to produce them. Whoop-de-doo. Do we need new types of clothing all the time? I don't know. Do we? 
people buy it. So if they're buying it, then there's money to be made. So spoken like a capitalist. Well, yeah. Do we need trends? No, not necessarily. But people's tastes tend to change over time. So one could argue that the problem of clothing was solved in prehistoric times already. An interesting point. I think we should go back to making dresses out of the uh, potato cloth bags. You know, maybe or then skinned animals. Yeah. I don't know, that could upset our vegan crowd. <laughs> but uh, the potato sacks were interesting because they actually started printing different floral designs on it yeah, because people did. were using it. Um, but capitalism tells us otherwise. It tells us that we need those things. That's called marketing. Your child needs that bullshit plastic toy that they're touched two times before it breaks. Without those products, we are less. I mean, this isn't really capitalism. This is consumptionism. Those are two completely different things. I mean, they go, and consumptionism is kind of bullshit. I mean, I often go hand in hand with each other. Not under pure capitalism, which is the best economic system on the earth can the man has ever known. It's it like, can you can get close to it. It's like pure socialism. Sounds good on paper, but can it be achieved without human nature interfering? Greed. Hell effects. of a lot better than communism, that's for sure. I detect a little communism. <laughs> <laughs> Fucking communist. Real freedom. What the what the fuck is this guy talking about? Please, work if you want, consume if you want, but do not force me to engage in all the bullshit and destruction. For God's sake, once, consider the price. That reminds me of an interesting point. Okay. Back in, like, I don't know why I always talked about the 50s, but whatever. Back then, I saw this uh, video clip of, I think it was General Electric yeah. selling their new dishwasher. And people were like, why would I want this? And it's like, oh, it saves you time. It does this. But the townspeople were smart enough to realize, and they told the salesman this. It's like, so you're telling me I have to work more to afford this thing that will then do the work for me? Why don't I just do it myself? I don't need to make more money to right. go buy this particular thing. Mm -hmm. It's like, absolutely. So back then, capitalism, yeah, capitalism was working fine, but consumptionism is what's profitable for all these big companies. Mm -hmm. And they're the ones driving it. I think, like, I think he's making the argument that consumptionism, capitalism, they tend to go hand in hand with each other. I mean, Ashton, what are your? We haven't heard from you yet. What are your thoughts on? I mean, we kind of read the article out loud. What, what are your overall thoughts on this? Yeah, it sounds like this guy. Mm, this guy sounds like a minimalist. Yeah, that's what I was thinking the whole time as I was reading it. Well, there's nothing wrong with minimalism, mm -hmm. but it's another thing just to sit there and complain and be like, "Oh yeah, my day job is so horrible." Well, oh I God. think mm, I think the root of all this mm, kind of lies more so at, at the top with these kind of big companies having like <clears throat> a majority or a near monopoly in a lot of these things. They basically get to determine what mm, what gets put out. I think monopolies suck. Yeah, there exactly. We go. Yeah, it sounds like he's making the argument that people are becoming wage slaves. What wage slaves? Wage slaves. Um, doing this. Everyone is picking yeah. poison. Do you want to do it? Breaking your back outside? Do you want to do it breaking your back inside? Or do you want to do it sitting at a computer? It really doesn't matter. Pick one and go for it. He's saying like a lot of that, like a lot of those type of jobs, they're useless in society. I think the underlying problem I have with this is just because you want to go out and create something doesn't necessarily mean you're going to create anything of value. It might be valuable to yourself, but that doesn't mean it's going to be valuable to anyone else. Okay. And so, therefore, if you're not creating value or other people along with it, you're just kind of wasting resources. That doesn't make sense. So you have to balance like what you're doing with helping other people as well. It's a fair point. I mean, like I, if you're just sitting there, Jared, making Minecraft maps for yourself, and all you do is sit in your room and just like do that all the time, you are like leeching off society, right? You're not producing anything good. You're not building the community. You're not doing anything. Back in like hunter gatherer days, if you're just sitting there like tying grass and knots and like not producing anything for the tribe, the tribe would be pissed off at you. You'd be like, hey, go like kill a deer or something. Like, Be useful. Okay. Right? But now the difference is, all right, if you really like designing Minecraft maps and you made it accessible to everyone, mm -hmm. then I would have a different tone. That's like, all right, now you're creating some sort of value. Mm -hmm. You know, that is fine. Go for it. But just because you sit there, you know, don't do anything all day, doesn't mean you're entitled to anything. Okay. I mean, I think you actually make some fair points there. I think you're getting at what I'm trying to say. Yeah, I get it. I'm, I'm getting it. I mean, there's some things, like, I, I agree with this article in parts, some parts I disagree with somewhat, but I see his message. It's like, I think people should do stuff that makes them happy in the first place. 
It's, I think that's kind of what he was trying to get at. Yeah. I think he did a very poor job of explaining it. But yes, people should go through and like do things and make them happier. And I think companies need to take more of a responsibility on employee happiness, and making sure that mm-hmm. whatever work they're doing actually has an impact. Right. Because number one, that saves the company money. If you have a bunch of employees who are doing piss all, all day, right? That's it expensive. Mm-hmm. It's like, therefore, you have to charge higher prices to your customers because you have to maintain their overhead. Yeah. And then it's worse on a customer because you have to pay higher prices. And that's not like a big problem I have right now. It's like a lot of companies aren't doing that because I mean they're just taking advantage of their employees. It's it's a big problem right now. Like I look at a lot of these the various jobs. Like I look at some of the requirements that they need, and when you actually go in the jobs, like oh you don't need any of that. Like some of their jobs seem like now you need a master's degree to get in. You need all this, this these prerequisites, and now oh, yeah. you can't even get into the job. It's like requirements: thirteen years experience, master's degree, pay ten dollars and thirteen cents an hour. <laughs> It's fucking fun. Like, you get in there and like, oh, we're going to treat you like shit regardless. It doesn't matter. Yeah, and then you're sitting there like, sophomore in high school can do this. Yeah, it's like, and like working at big companies, like we've all worked retail before. Like, you're replaceable. Like they don't give a fuck about you. You're just a number to them. So, it's like, they don't care about employee happiness. Like, you quit, whatever. It's like, okay, our right, next person's up. We can treat you however we want. I mean, sick days. I mean, luckily, I'll briefly touch on this. Um, like I said, I won't talk about where this was, but I was a manager for a good while, and everyone below me loved me. Like it was great because I wouldn't micromanage them, mm-hmm. which is very important. Like you teach them, you explain very clearly like what their role is, and then here's the secret. You ready? Yeah. You let them fucking do it. Yeah. That's it. That's all you have to do. If they're like going outside of that task, like gently reengage them. Be like. Yo, like come over, mm-hmm. like do your thing, and then just like let them go. Yeah, they were some of the happiest people I met because they're like, yeah, we don't really have to worry about anything except for my supervisors who were terrible. Yeah, and they're like, oh yeah, they kind of piss me off, but like I'll still go back. And as soon as I walk in, they're like, hey Matthew, everything else, and like it's great. But so many people don't understand management, mm-hmm. and management is the number one reason why people leave companies, yes. not because of pay. Not because of anything else, but because if you have a bullshit manager mm-hmm. who belittles you, makes you feel like nothing you're doing is worthwhile, why would you want to stay there? Right. I think there's a fundamental managerial problem mm-hmm. in the United States and in corporate culture. I think so, too. And I think that's what's driving the mental health crisis mm-hmm. and then also what's feeling like obesity and everything else. Mm-hmm. And may very well factor into all these workplace violence acts. Mm-hmm. Right. I think so too. Actually, I completely agree with you there. It's like if you're, if you have no meaningful existence, you're not going to be happy. Mm-hmm. So what do you want to do? You want to lash out. Right. And then people go and lash out. It's exactly. like, it's not a gun thing. It's not a knife thing. It's not an ax thing. It's corporatism mm-hmm. and that consumptionism. Yeah. And we, we want to often like, with like guns, we want to blame the guns all the time because it's the simplest thing to blame. And so and many we, people do the same thing, which is like, oh, late stage capitalism, whatever. It's not capitalism that's doing it. It's corporatism and consumptionism. That whatever you have, if it's not brand new or like new, mm-hmm. that it's trash. That is wrong. Like I miss the days where you could go, like get something. It would last. If it broke, mm-hmm. it's made out of metal or something else. Fix it, and then guess what? You know how to work on it, and it's working perfectly fine once again. Yeah, and guess what? I've been flying Cessna 172s that were built in, what, the 70s or 80s? Mm-hmm. Still run perfectly fine. I mean, planes from the 40s and 50s run perfectly yeah. fine as well. Like, you don't need to go out get the shiny new thing all the time just because, like, the original thing. You yeah, probably keeping get up fixed. with the Joneses is marketing PR bullshit. Yeah. Don't do it. <laughs> it's, like, this, I, my iPhone, for example, like, my battery was starting to die on it because when I'm like, oh, I'm getting a new iPhone, new iPhone letter 13, whatever the fuck it is now, I'm like, no, I just... You get replaced for sixty dollars. Way better option spending like a thousand dollars on a new phone. Not roasting you. I know. I had to get one this week. Yeah, Yeah. you had to. That's a little bit different. Yeah, it's different in his case because his was a bit beyond repair. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. My touchscreen just straight up stopped working, which is also Apple's fault, which is bullshit. That's a whole other thing. Fucking these useless ass companies. I swear. All right, but we're running low on time with this. Uh, I will link up the article in the description. It was written by Antonio. Millennial, I think that's how you pronounce it. Millennial. Millennial, yeah. Antonio Millennial. So if you want to check it out, it'll be in the description below. And then the last thing we want to do here. Overall, I thought the article was all right. Like, I'm not ripping on them. Mm-hmm. Um, I think people tend to oversimplify some of these issues and just, like, give it a surface level analysis. 
Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And you really have to kind of dig down and read between the lines to get what he was trying to say out of it. Yeah, and that's the whole problem with hypernormalization. They oversimplify it to the point where it can fit on a headline and don't do much else. Yeah. It was but a- then there's no complexity or nuance. And if you don't have that, then the whole world just becomes superficial. Right. It's kind of what's happening now. No news site wants to actually go in and like explore the news. Just like, oh, here's a headline. Wow, that's crazy. Another headline. Wow, mass shooting. Crazy. Oh, time to stop. Tomorrow. Yeah. We, we're, we like, we're very forgetful. Like, we have a mind of like maggots, basically. Like, we forget things like immediately. It's a 24 hour news cycle. Oh, next headline, next headline. And we already forgot about what happened the previous day. Yeah. I think the 24 hour news cycle sucks. sucks. There we go. Yeah. And something else about that news cycle is I often notice they tend to cite each other without any proper peer review. And that's probably one of the biggest reasons that mm, I know something like the F 35 has been getting a lot of unnecessary flack because. All these news cycles keep citing each other over and over without doing peer check. And what they fail to realize is that a lot of these headlines that bash on the F-35, a lot of those things actually originate from, get this, Russian propaganda. Specifically RT in their interviews with one Pierre Spray. <laughs> a guy who avidly hates anything that's modern and American. I forget my point. Thank you, Ashton. Oh, I remember now. Honestly, I'm envious of our listeners. Like, I really, truly wish that I could just... Go in somewhere, listen for like an hour, just be like, all right, what actually happened this week that's noteworthy? Mm -hmm. And then just like not have to watch the news the rest of the week and be like, all right, well, I'll know what's going on next like Friday night or whatever. Yeah. Like, it's so simple. I didn't watch news before. I'd watch it like once a week and be like, all right, anything happened? Are we at war? No. All right. Good. Yeah. Too many people get sucked into like even the five or 10 minute news cycle. Like what's happening like right now? What celebrity is doing something right now? What's happening right now? It's like, you don't need to know what's happening right now. If it's important enough, you'll find out about it. Ignorance is bliss sometimes. And I think we have access to too much information. I think it's had a gave also another big kickback on our mental health as well. We see all these headlines, mainly negative headlines, pop up all the time. Too much going on. Too little time to process it. Exactly. We can't process it. It's too much information. Sensory overload. Yeah. All, right. yeah. All I will say is that if you see repetitive articles, just ignore them and move on to something else more productive. Oh, so like when they ran COVID for two years straight, nothing but COVID, and the TV was COVID, 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 COVID-19, coronavirus. You forgot George Floyd and then COVID. <laughs> that was the whole, I already said it once, that like when George Floyd happened, like that whole incident, COVID stopped existing for that month, and then it came back again, like around election time. But yeah, just find something more productive to do with your life. Don't waste your time with repetitive articles. Right. <laughs> All right, well, we don't have too much time left. So, Ashton, I know kind of your week to give us some life advice. So, what do you have for us this week? All right, I think a good topic for this week's life advice segment will be conflict resolution. Mm-hmm. Each of us have all... What the fuck are you talking about? Fuck you. Asshole. Fuck. Hey, hey, easy, easy. Let me get to my point real quick. You don't have a point. Bitch. All right. Bet. I'm just kidding. We're all really good friends here. (laughs) Yeah. Just bantering. Yeah. But yeah. Yeah, conflict resolution. We've all experienced some sort of conflict at some point. Physical, verbal. And if you're one of those guys who thinks they do not... Just you wait. Mm-hmm. We've all experienced or will experience conflict at some point. We need to know how to resolve it if we want to maintain, build and maintain healthy relationships. We need to know how to resolve conflict to prevent things from escalating out of control and we find ourselves shooting at someone <coughs> for no reason. China. Yeah. Uh, not China's bullshit conflict resolution that only profits them. But anyways. Hmm. Yes. Uh, your resolution is uh, give everything to China. Good resolution. What are they? Protesters? Mm, proceeds to run them over with a tank. What? What? Not that. Not that. Ten minutes Anyways. square massacre. Didn't happen. Winnie Next. the Pooh. <laughs> Next. Didn't happen. All right. But yeah. Well, I think one of the most com- common forms of conflict that any of us could expect to encounter would be a verbal conflict. Say, uh, let's take an, uh, say a verbal argument with a sibling. Mm-hmm. Say I'm going out, I'm basically trying to play around with my little sister, and I do something that upsets her. Yeah. <clears throat> the first thing to do would be to, well, if you recognize that you have done something wrong, first off would be to apologize for doing something wrong. Uh, this is what you do. You just go, bitch! <laughs> hey. Go on, Ash. But yeah. 
I think if you want to do a proper con- Fuck you, Jesse! In order to do a proper conflict resolution, I feel like a sober analysis of all the facts you have available to you is essential. Mm -hmm. Okay, so basically recognize- Yeah, the bitch! Magnets! Oh! Copyright. <laughs> Basically, uh, recognize the fact, recognize like what happened first. Don't angrily lash out at people. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. And if it does start to escalate, try to de-escalate the situation. Walk away and let cooler heads prevail. Okay. Take some time. Think over what happened, what led to it, what might have caused There's it. There's a problem with that. I think a lot of people might could be canceled. But fuck it, we all canceled anyways. So people's brains develop at twenty five. Roughly, yes. right? Most people, I would say, don't have the mental ability to let their frontal lobe take over and reason through it. Mostly because I don't think they practice it enough. Not because they're not capable or stupid or anything else. Don't, I'm not saying that. I'm saying that they probably just don't do it because they don't have that pattern, right? Their first thought isn't remove yourself from the situation. It's, oh, really? You. And it escalates from there yeah. because they're instinctively lashing out. Like, I'm sure there's some semblance of neurobiology somewhere to back this up. But, like, frontal lobe development is kind of rare, mm -hmm. especially nowadays. Right. With what I would say growing up on tablets and everything else, it affects your development. Mm -hmm. That'd be something interesting to talk to Andrew Huberman about. It would be. Yeah, Huberman Lab podcast. I thought you were about to say Andrew Tate for a second. <laughs> nah. <laughs> Go on. Uh, bottom G. Anything else, Ashton? But yeah, um, it takes mm, it takes a lot of time and especially humility to reckon, mm, to try and back away from a mm, potentially escalating situation and try to sort things out. Yeah. Now we have to have conflict resolution with Cameron because he's probably pissed at us. So now we have to resolve this. No, and how I will do that is this. Sam. And he'll be fine and be like, Sam. Now I'll, <laughs> now the way and then I will. he'll be like, Sam. And then Sam. he's fine. All right, that perfect conflict solved. Yep. Or I can say, fuck you, bitch, in the chat. Now it's a way to solve it, too. <laughs> well, it'll either cause them to shut up or, it'll, or they'll double down. Yeah. Most not, of the time, they'll double down. Not the way, gotta defend your honor. Not the way to do it. Well, are you really defending your honor or are you defending your pride? Oh, that's a good point right there, Ashton. Yeah, and I will I'll say this much. To, it also depends. Like, are you really going to have conflict resolution if someone spits in your mother's face or in your wife's face or something else? Yeah, probably not. There, are, I will admit there are certain limitations where you may have to take a more assertive stance. But for right now, I'm kind of... You're saying for general disagreements. Yeah, I'm, right? I'm saying for like general disagreements or <clears throat> a ver a verbal, I guess a verbal lashing out at, say, your family or your spouse or whoever. If you really want to get into this, read... Harvard Business Review's Emotional Intelligence. It's a fantastic book, and I think everyone should read it. Yeah. I think it's called On Emotional Intelligence, precisely. Mm -hmm. All right. Anything else to add, Ashton? Well, I will say this regarding one's mm, pride mm, and whatnot. Mm. Pride is not the opposite of shame, but rather its source. Mm -hmm. Only true humility is the antidote for pride. And I should stress, humility is not simply having a negative view on oneself. It's hu true humility is having a sober analysis of both your strengths, your positive aspects, as well as your negative aspects. Mm -hmm. that's, that's a really good uh, message right there. And like in some cases, as Matthew mentioned, um, yeah, they either, like you have to defend yourself. Obviously, like if you're being attacked, someone's going at you, or like they're doing something that will harm you. I think, again, I have to be careful in how I phrase this, but one of the traditional elements of masculinity is not being hot-headed and just going through and beating up whatever you see, right? It's being quiet, you know, and not speaking immediately. Like if you go through and see all these, like, see all these uh, Sigma male memes, right? <laughs> They're all talking about like um, Andrew Tate or Thomas Shelby or James Bond. Essentially, like what more so the latter two have in common, right? Is that in their respective TV shows, they it's not that they don't get angry, it's that they're slow to angry mm -hmm. and that they are calculated about their approach. So you see what I was talking about earlier. Yeah with neurobiology and they're like letting their frontal lobe kick in go through like what their decision is going to be mm -hmm. but they don't immediately lash out and get into conflict yeah. restraint they're able yes. to process things restraint very important able yeah, to that process. doesn't mean you're not allowed to like get mad or anything else yeah, exactly. but you sit there 
you fucking think about yes, it for a minute. Yes, anger is a natural emotion. You're going to feel it, but just because someone's pulling up in your driveway, you don't fucking take shots at them. You mm-hmm. Instead, you watch you. Analyze the situation, like, oh, yeah, they're yeah. probably just you know, took the wrong turn. Shelby would do, we'd probably stand there, kind of like look down on him, take a long drag of a cigarette. Mm-hmm. And it's like, that's kind of what you do. You sit there and you just think about it for a second. Right. It's going to save you from a lot of stupid decisions. Exactly. Yep. <clears throat> the value of taking things slowly is that you can always see the path clearly ahead. Mm-hmm. Well, actions that are made in anger cannot easily be undone mm-hmm. so you guys all know the comic of the dog and the bird yeah where maybe it was a coyote no one of the two why we coyote or a wolf no it might have been a wolf but essentially there's some sort of bird let's call it a hawk and a wolf so the hawk is terrorizing the wolf right it's like swooping down pecking it and whatnot and so the uh, hawk lands at the cliff edge and just sits there and the wolf in wide rage runs towards it to bight it and of course the hawk just jumps off and like flies but mm-hmm. the wolf Jumps off, off the, the cliff. cliff. And that's what I mean by you know actions made in anger and in haste cannot be undone. You mm-hmm. can't unjump off a cliff. Right. So make sure that if you're going to do something like that, you have something below you. <laughs> like reason through it first. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Marley Cody is not necessarily, he doesn't think through these things. He always thinks through them. It's just that every time his plans in, in, in the equipment he uses backfires on him. Yeah. So if you do think about a situation, don't think about it like Wiley Coyote either. Make sure your decision making is rational and yeah. correct. And also make sure that what you get for the job actually works as intended. Right. <laughs> that's <laughs> ominous, Trash, and that's ominous. Oh, yeah, that does kind of sound bad. <laughs> make sure whatever you get for the job works. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Well, <laughs> all right, buddy. I'm like, mm, well, granted, in Wiley Coyote's case, he does test his gadgets and whatnot beforehand. It's just that when it comes, when the rubber finally hits the road, it always back and blows out on him. True. <laughs> Don't buy acne products. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> but yeah. In reference to the cartoon, not talking about any legitimate or fictional company out there that might may or may not be selling actual products. Any disclaimer. N- any coincidence to any living persons or entities, real or fictional, is entirely coincidental. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, we'll wrap it up here before this goes off a cliff. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> okay, stop. Let's um... All right. Well, that that will uh, conclude. <laughs> God, All right, let's not speed ahead of ourselves too much. <laughs> <laughs> That'll conclude this week's episode of The Current Case. Next week, Cameron will be back once again. Hopefully. Hopefully. But no argument. FBI, open up! We'll see you guys. Your action. Not for your ominous uh, thing. We'll see you guys next week. Thank you. Mm-hmm.